It's exciting to see the opportunities that are given to survey through digitalization. And the game has completely changed. Now, I may be wearing a pair of shiny boots today, but I'm here to tell a dirty boot story, the construction story. And I remember a job early in my career where we were installing high-end loft office space in a four-story urban manufacturing warehouse building that had been built just after the Civil War in the city of Atlanta. And this building had been abandoned for about 30 years by the time we got there. It was a wooden structure and these beams were smiling. And at the time, it might seem like a simple task today, but we had a really hard time figuring out how to figure out how much floor leveling compound to put in here to put in some nice hardwood floors, but without overloading the structure. That was a big concern. All we had to work with was a rotating laser, a pole with some lines on it, and a 24-inch grid that we transcribed to paper. And that wasn't even the, big, the most critical part of this job. We also had to install an elevator into an existing shaft because the owner had some historical preservation requirements and really didn't want us interrupting the structure any more than we had to. And all I had to work with at the time, Andrew showed you his calculator. What we had to work with at the time was a plumb bob and a string line. And it took a week and multiple trips to the job site to work our way up and down that shaft, figuring out, with enough confidence to order a very expensive elevator, what the maximum vertical shaft was that we could provide the elevator contractor. And this was a simple project, honestly, nothing like the Waterloo Station that Andrew talked about. And as we prepped for this talk, I was really excited to see a customer who posted a LinkedIn where they were working on the same problem but with a laser scanner. And they were scanning the shaft and pulled the information right into a 3D modeling environment where they could provide that information to the elevator provider to produce their elevator. Andrew hit the nail on the head. Construction projects are more complex than ever. And in developed economies like here in the United States, we've hit a bit of a tipping point where consistently rising demand for services combined with a constrained workforce, we're not bringing as many people as with survey, we're not bringing as many people into the workforce, perhaps, in construction as we once did. And that puts the whole of the industry in a bit of a pinch. I might even call it an ex existential crisis. How do we get more done, satisfying the demands of a growing, developing world, with fewer people, consuming less materials, and in a more sustainable manner? Recently, economist Brian Bolio of ITR told a group of industry executives in construction, the industry must get three to 4% more, product more productive every year, year upon year for the foreseeable future, just to get ahead of this pinch. And we know from experience, we can't get that productivity the old fashioned way. We can't just push the guys a little harder. We can't push the crews for, for more hours. We can't just pay a few more bonuses or change incentive plans. It's not working. No, we have to, institute radical changes, and Bolio was specific to say that it, had to, it was going to have to include investment in technologies that are going to augment the people with capital. There's really no way around it. And we've seen the impact that using technology has had on our pre-construction planning with VDC, or Virtual Design and Construction, with BIM, Building Information Modeling. We were able to deeply understand projects in the office before we go out to the field. And on the design side, with concepts like generative design, architects and engineers are producing optimized buildings with more complex forms than ever before imagined. Andrew mentioned that Mexico City Airport, you really should go check that out. And it makes sense that design has become digitalized. That design is about ideas. And we're accustomed to the idea that the design process might be digitalized. But the, the question is, that it becomes about construction, right? So I like to think about 
try to come up with a definition or understand a definition of these words. And, and Gartner has what I think is a very useful definition for us, that digitalization is about the use of digital technologies to change a business model and provide new revenue and new value-producing opportunities. So in construction, we build physical things, right? Roads, bridges, buildings, schools, offices. And we know from our economists that we need to apply digital technologies or, or, uh, in order to survive. But before we get into specific, specific technologies, let's think about what digitalization or being digital means in construction. How do we connect design with the field? How do we achieve that productivity improvement out there in the real world? Is moving from paper to electronic plans so we can look at them on an iPad or, or a tablet device, is that transformational? Does it mean we have to move to robotic construction, to off-site fabrication, to artificial intelligence? Are we gonna be starting incorporating blockchain? That's the new one this year. It might, but let's look at the heart of what it means to become a digital business. Let's look at, at, at those pieces. What's the nature of the relationship with your customer? How do you achieve a step change in productivity and profitability? And how do you move from becoming, let's say, just the builder to the most valuable player on the owner's team? One of the themes of this conference, the major thing of this, this conference, is about the change you shape. The opportunity to change the world it does begin with you. And so what I'd like to do is look at some change some of you have been shaping in your worlds around you. Like Andrew, we'll take a bit of a, a trip around the world. And I'm gonna start right here in the United States of America with Davis Construction of Rockville, Maryland. Now, Davis prides itself in being, uh, in its technical prowess, its ability to take on projects that others around may not be able to take on. And one project that they were brought into, uh, it had an existing team and wasn't necessarily going so well, it's called the U-Line Arena. This is a, a unique thin-shelled concrete structure. It's a bit of an arch, you'll, you'll, you can see it in the video. And this building had been through a lot. It did house hockey, house hockey teams, it was built in 1941. It housed basketball teams. It was the site of the first Beatles concert in the United States. And then later in his life, it was a waste transfer station. So, Given the state of the project, the owner called Davis in, and Davis dove, dove in, but they didn't, just didn't dive into the physical parts. They really stepped back and said, let's apply laser scanning to, to understand what's going on with the structure, to really in detail understand the structure. Let's apply 24 by seven monitoring systems to understand the impact of all the moves we're having on this, on this complex structure, on this job. And this was able to provide proactive alerts to the Davis engineering team when, when there might be deviations that would impact the structure and, and keep them from having a successful project. And they did have a, have a very successful project. On another project, the same owner didn't even call another contractor. They just called Davis. And this was an even more daunting project than the first. On this one, the owner wanted to put a group of high-end, a high-end mixed-use project on an entire city block in Washington, D.C. But there was a problem. This, height, this site had several historically significant buildings on it that where they were placed did not work for the owner's pro forma. So Davis, again, applied a smart digitalized approach. And what they did is they used digital surveying technologies to guide the precise location of micro piles that they drilled through the existing building. They went inside the building and drilled through the slab uh, to support the building. They then excavated a layer under that slab, made a very thick concrete foundation under the buildings, and then picked them up and moved the buildings to other locations on the site that did work with the owner's project, that did fit in with the design and, and meet the historical preservation criteria. So by applying a smart, digitalized approach to their projects, Davis has transformed themselves as the preferred technical builder in the Washington, D.C. market. Next, let's go across the pond, let's go over to Oslo, Norway, where Viadeke, the largest construction company in Norway, is building a new high-rise museum called Lambda. Now, 
the museum is almost finished, but we're going to talk a little bit about the beginning of the project. Lambda is on the wharf front, is on the waterfront there in Oslo. And so to get a, a good foundation on the waterfront, we're going to have to drill piers, drive piles in, into, the, into the muck. And the test drills found that there were lots of things in the muck. There were wooden boxes filled with all sorts of waste. And a pile driving operation needs to be very precise to make sure that it's going to support the weight it needs to support. Now, normally, this operation would, would require two surveyors constantly monitoring the piles to make sure they went in the right spot. And when they didn't or they got deflected by something, they would have to be reset, pulled up, reset, and re-engineered. This is a whole lot of rework that, that would, could be a problem on this job. And so what Viadeki did was they worked with Leica to outfit this pile driving operation with a drilling rig. So they used a piece of equipment on a, that, that was intended for another operation. And they then set the system inside the cab so this pile driving operator could see the deviations in real time, right? So this person is in the cab getting information virtually from the surveyors in terms of the theoretical and then constantly providing actual feedback back to the surveyor from the cab. And the transformation I see here is a personal transformation of sorts. This pile driving operator is now an information professional as a part of a real-time correction solution. Now, finally, for our last example, there's a couple of trends going on here. One is when we start talking about digitalization, the notion of democratization often comes to mind. Democratization is, is this idea that as technology becomes more available, simpler, more affordable, then people who may not have had access to that before based on the size of their firm, will start using workflows that may have only been available to much larger firms previously. So we're going to go to big sky country. That's Montana, for those of you who are not from the US, and visit with Harvey's Engineering, who's a mechanical contractor on high-end homes there in Bozeman. Now, Harvey's is living in a microcosm of this existential challenge I've talked about. Not enough skilled workforce, rising demand for services, rising cost of labor that really uh, impacts their, their ability to do business. And they were solving that through going into an off-site fabrication process. But remember, these are very high-end homes. These are celebrity homes we're working on. And I know all of you are probably celebrities and behave this way, but these celebrities tend to change their minds about stuff at any point. Move this wall move this door, move this plumbing, move this kitchen, tear down the house and rebuild it because I don't like the view. And if you're trying to get into an off-site fabrication workflow, this kind of change is a little hard to incorporate in your uh, ecosystem. So they acquired a BOK 360 and then started scanning the conditions prior to their off-site fabrication workflow right at the last possible moment. And they were able to then provide deliverables to their fabricator that would let them really understand the conditions as they were, not as they theor theoretically would be. So they solved their problem. They were able to achieve what I would call a transformational step change in productivity. They, they believe they achieved 90% more productivity with 80% less rework. Now, our economists ask us to come up with three or 4% a year these guys have achieved 90% with the transformation of that operation. So that truly is a step change in productivity. But I don't think this is the real transformation that's going on here with Harvey's. They've, the owners of these homes then saw, well, why? This is a pretty cool deliverable. Could you do this as a final condition? I'd like to get that so I can have a virtual model of my finished project. I don't know why they want it. Maybe they're going to put it in VR goggles and show it to Uncle, Uncle Bob at Thanksgiving. I don't, I don't know what it's for. But the, the end customer saw value there, and Harvey started providing that as an value-added service to the, to the owner. So Harvey's transformed not only their relationship with their customer, the home builder, they transformed their relationship with the customer's customer, the purchaser of the house. So they've repositioned themselves in the value chain. This is transformation. This is the essence of digitalization. In fact, if you want to hear more about what Harvey's has done, the next class in room 2502, they will present their results and actually their case study of how they did that. So it's in room 2502 at 11 o'clock. 
So this reminds me of our own multi-vista systems, part of the Hexagon family of companies. Uh, the founder was an electrician solving his own aftermarket and QA problems, and he transformed himself into a global provider of construction documentation uh, through the relationship of being a part of Hexagon. So from field to office, untapped digital opportunities do exist in the physical nature of construction. You must seize them to continue to be in this field. Let us help you find them, take them, and own them.